YouTube, this is Captain Blue Stuff here, and I'm going to present to you a Netflix hit and miss movie review. Now, if you're not sure what that is, I'll clarify it by saying that, um, you know, like, like a lot of movie reviews that I've seen in the past, uh, they're usually done right after the individual has seen the movie, and uh, it's right, fr right, really, after the movie is released. I don't get a lot around to a lot of movies, so most of the time I watch movies are on Netflix. So what I uh, decided to do here is uh, do a little bit of uh, reviews on these hit or miss movies that I see on Netflix. And I, if I give them a hit or miss, it's pretty much to recommend or not recommend that you watch this if you have or have access to Netflix. So uh, this video today, we're going to be talking about uh, uh, quite a dandy. Um, my family, uh, in particular, uh, my father and my brother, uh, we uh, we like horror movies. Uh, he grew up in the 80s, uh, so he's accustomed to the um, you know the Nightmare on Elm Streets, the Friday the 13th. Um, but he also was a fan of the uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which I eventually saw and uh, I enjoyed. I even you know not trying to get flack, but I actually enjoyed the 2003 remake, uh, pretty good. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about Texas Chainsaw 3D. That, uh, <laughs> um, well, uh, to be honest, I've heard, uh, I've, I've never seen a lot of the other sequels to the original series. Uh, I've seen bits and pieces, but they've looked, they've looked quite odd, and I've heard that they're definitely nowhere near the classic that which was the first one. So um, I had heard about this movie uh, around the first time it came out, and. Uh, you know, I, it looked okay, uh, but uh, so I was uh, browsing Netflix and I happened to come across it and I, you know, I had to watch it. Let me go off by first by saying I thought it was quite interesting that uh, the beginning of the movie uh, is a direct sequel, in essence, to the original. Um, at the end of the original, you know, the girl escapes. Uh, Leatherface is acting like a buffoon, swinging his chainsaw, screaming like a, a dummy, and uh, that's that. But it actually kind of shows that at the end, and uh, it uh, brings it to life because then it shows the cops showing up, and an angry mob of people showing up, and uh, pretty much they gun down all the people inside. Uh, I did like Bill Mosley's spot. Uh, he, did, I know he did play a part in one of the uh, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre sequels. I'm not 100% sure with what he played, but I know he played like a crazy guy. But I really like uh, him from uh, The Devil's Rejects, House of a Thousand Corpses. Um, I thought it was pretty cool that he he uh, played uh, the father, uh, the sheriff or whatever, the, the dad rule. Um, and uh, they all get gunned down. And then uh, a little girl is, is left alive. Um, so then we jump into the modern era which um, I did find quite strange because uh, given that it's general knowledge that this movie is supposedly to take place in the 70s, um, it seems like we're in the 2000s, maybe the 2010s, um, in, this, in this installment, uh, in the actor part, which I find rather interesting. Um, but anyway, uh, we were greeted by this uh, very attractive young lady, uh, and... Uh, you get the sense already that she's going to be the girl that's left behind. Um, she gets a uh, she's gets a, a letter saying that uh, pretty much she's got an inheritance down in Texas, and for her to come down and get it, and she doesn't know anything about it. She turns out that she was raised by people who were actually at the uh, the, the massacre uh, where the family got killed by all the, the ravenous mob and she thought they were her parents the whole time. So when she finds out that's not the truth, they get into a tiff, she ends up going anyway. So she gets with her friend uh, and this other hot pretty girl. And then this one guy, I don't remember his name, but I know he's kind of famous, I think he's a singer or something. I, I'm not 100% sure. Um, but they all go down and uh, they go down, uh, which uh, obviously they can't go back to the original house because it was destroyed. So there's a new location and uh, they go to this location, and uh, uh, this guy approaches them, uh, I guess the keeper of the will or whatnot, and uh, he tells her, he tells her to, uh, I think he tells her to read it, you know, 
before you go in the house or something like that, make sure you read this or try to read it as soon as possible. But she doesn't. And uh, we, it, it's just, I don't know. I, I She goes around the town and uh, she meets this young deputy or cop or whatever. And I, I was assuming he was going to be like the love interest, the... Um, the guy who was going to be saving her because I, I assume it's Texas Chainsaw uh, so Leatherface is going to be killing people and she's going to probably try to survive and he's probably going to be the guy to help her so I assumed that he was a good guy um, but we'll move more on that later so um, so one of her friends uh, well, they pick up a hitchhiker who uh, robs them blind um, and yeah he's because uh, it's a fancy house that she's going into so he goes down to the uh, he finds the basement through a trap door and he's trying to find stuff and lo and behold in this um, in this bottom room Leatherface and Leatherface and once that happens it, it Leatherface simultaneously picks them off um, uh, I don't want to go into too many detail about the whole story I mean boyfriend cheats on her with her hot friend and that's not all important the important thing was the movie good uh, and uh, so <laughs> I'll tell you I was actually, I've heard a lot of people say that they hate this movie. Um, I didn't really, it didn't really bother me too much. I mean, uh, I didn't really think about a lot of the things like the time frame and all that till afterwards, but uh, I'm pretty easy to appease and uh, it doesn't take a lot to annoy me. I'm usually, I'm, I'm not too, my, stand, my standard isn't really that high. So a lot of, I can pretty much, do a lot of uh, handle a lot of things, and uh, so we get to the uh, part uh, in, in question. Um, he, uh, the young deputy guy, um, takes the, uh, the the main girl, uh, and uh, he's trying to, because Leatherface is on a rampage and whatnot, trying to go after her. They confront her and finds out her friends are dead, and uh, he, he drops the biggest bombshell that I think. Uh, and, and what I mean by bombshell, it's one of those, what? Like, to, he, he's got the girl and he's radioing the mayor. Now, the mayor comes off pretty shady himself. He, I believe it's revealed that he was part of the uh, angry mob that killed Leatherface's family in the beginning. So he's on the on the two-way and uh, he, pretty much he says, I've got her, dad. It's like, the fuck? Like, you know he's your father. I mean, I mean, of course they're using that to, to throw the twist out there, to throw the curveball. But seriously, he could have done that a little bit better. I honestly think that's the first, like, what? 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 Are, you, are you kidding me? What is this? But, um, so it's revealed. And what I find is very interesting is that they're taking a concept from another horror franchise. They're taking... The concept that the town is evil, the town, the people that did this horrible thing to this family are all trying to keep everything quiet, kind of like the, fa uh, the the townspeople in the Nightmare on Elm Street series. They're trying to keep Freddy hidden. They don't want Freddy to ever be talked about, and they will silence anybody that brings it up or tries to do anything that will bring light to this. So now you get the feeling that, well, it's pretty much laid out. Leatherface is now a sympathy character. Because he's getting chained up and beaten up by by the, uh, the, the 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 mayor and the corrupt cops, but there's one uh, there's one uh, uh, cop who uh, from the beginning uh, didn't want all this stuff to happen. He's pretty sympathetic, and um, so point blank, they all uh, she finds out who she really is in the police station. She leaves. They find out who that she knows, so they go after her. And uh, they, they capture Leatherface and, uh, no, they capture her, my mistake. They capture her and they got her in this big warehouse and they got her tied up. And then Leatherface shows up, she gets out of it and uh, the cops show up and they're beating, beating up Leatherface. And uh, this is the part that I find rather fascinating. Uh, this was, now I told you that earlier part where he goes, Dad. That's, that was the first thing that kind of, you know, messed with my mind a little bit. But uh, that's nothing compared to what happened here. Um, 
There's nothing that I find more awkward than watching a movie with a very cheap line. Uh, Deuce Bigelow, European Gigolo is a great example of that. But uh, you, uh, she grabs the chainsaw and she throws it to Leatherface. Okay, now, this guy killed her boyfriend and her friends. He tried to kill her. They give him the excuse that he's simple-minded, he doesn't understand. She throws him the chainsaw. And then she utters those famous words. Do your thing, cuz. It's like, what the fuck? I mean, seriously? That's the best thing you can say? Do your thing, cuz? There is, even though that is a poorly written dialogue, like, that, that, she could, she shouldn't even have said nothing to him. That, she shouldn't even have given him the chainsaw. But you, even, I could live with that, that she gives him the chainsaw. But the fact that she said that, oh, damn, man. What was, who, who was writing this? That's so generic. I could see that in an 80s movie, actually. I, that seems like one of those generic 80s cool action uh, catchphrases to give to a character. Uh, I don't know, to sound cool, but now it does. It does. It, it absolutely does. So they team up. Leatherface kills the corrupt uh, mayor, and it's all seems they go back to the house. Then she opens the letter. Okay, she opens the letter that she was supposed to open earlier in the damn movie, and it was written by, I believe, her mother or grandmother, one of the two, and told her, gave her instructions that Leatherface is just, he's, he's harmless, he just doesn't know what he's doing, he's simple-minded, <laughs> and she takes care of him. The ending scene, she's bringing him shit. He's still in the basement, and she's taking care of him, and, and I assume she's assuming this role now. She's part of the family. She's embracing her family, so now she's keeping him as a locked secret. And she's, and I'm sure if people came, she would let him kill them because that's just all of a sudden her quick transformation. Makes no sense. I could buy this. I, I could buy this if the fact that he killed her friends, her boyfriend, she knew about it, she watched him kill him, uh, I think she she watched him, her, her one friend. She knows he was out. He tried to kill her. I mean, what the hell, people? Why write that shit? Seriously. I, I don't understand it. Huh. You know, I, my dad, he watched this with me. Now, he is a hard guy to impress. If a movie is shitty, he knows it's shitty. If a movie's good, He'll say it's good, and you know it's good, because he, it's hard to impress him. He said, this was so bad, it shouldn't even be made. He's a hardcore Texas Chainsaw Massacre fan. He hated the goofy sequels, even though he thought they were comedic. This is comedic, like those, in a bad way. Sometimes, but... Oh, God. You just can't get over the fact the two things that killed, oh, actually, the three things that killed this movie. This could pass off as a uh, mediocre sequel at best. A lot of these war franchises have mediocre sequels. But this one, in particular, has three nails in its coffin that prevent it from being absolutely anything, uh, nothing, no mediocre, nothing below mediocre, shit or anything. It's the fact that A, this movie's time timeline is completely fucked. Two, the fact that he kills her friends and her boyfriend. She finds out she, he's her cousin. She decides to live with him, and now she's crazy too. And the third of all is that god awful line do your thing, cuz. With that, I'm gonna have to say. This movie is definitely a miss, and, and uh, trust me when I tell you, if you're a fan of the horror genre, and you like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, don't watch this movie unless you want to see how ridiculous it is, but don't go into this movie watching it thinking that it is going to blow your socks off, because it, it'll blow your socks off in a wrong way. I mean, I can't even describe to you the feeling when you hear that god-awful line. Seriously, I do. I mean, I know somebody's like, well, way to uh, cry over spilled milk. It's like, no, this is an atrocious line. Why would anyone want to listen to that? I mean, who wrote that? 
Seriously. Seriously. Okay. My review's over. <laughs>